And here we are again. Myself and Kate Walker, we're just about to enter the factory. So, well, what are we standing around for? Let's walk in. And let's look for clues about Hans. We've got his sculpture, which probably is another automaton. We've got one, two, three, four ways to go, so let's start from the right, maybe. I was so lucky in the last video about the order in which I visited things. I don't think it's gonna happen again. Not a huge chance for that. They sure were proud of their automatons. And again, I can go from the back. But let's go through the main door first. Let's see if it's open. No, it's not. Oh, so you know what building that is. You're a smart girl, Kate. Okay, so let's go from behind. Some bush. Oh, nothing for now. Uh, there we've got some kind of ladder and the door and we can go even further. So let's have a look at the ladder first maybe. Of course something automaton like. And I guess I'll just have to make it work. I think that's the sentence that is most often repeated repeated in this game. I'm the key. You need to start dating a key maker of, so, of some sort. I mean the key, right? Oh, so you think you need a key for the ladder? But you don't think about getting a key to the door. That's women for you. And a labyrinth. Not particularly what I want to see. Don't have much of a choice though, do I? Take your time. Oh, we've got someone here. Maybe he'll help you find the key. Good morning. You've got a magnificent garden here. It's a she. Don't call them robots. They're automatons. People won't like you. Okay, um I'll try to help you if I'll if I'll find a way. You've got a magnificent garden here. So I get the same sort of option. Yeah, I'm gonna be checking it sometimes. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. be trying. I'm gonna be trying to speak to those people again sometimes within the second within the second attempt you get new new possible answers in other games. I don't know if it works the same way here. Mm, okay, so that looks like a labyrinth. Let's don't go there just yet. And that's another part of the labyrinth, isn't it? Um, 
I wouldn't want to go in there. Maybe I'll find some sort of a map at some point. I don't know, this labyrinth kind of scares me. Well, but Kate is such an adventurous girl. She'll be alright. Hopefully. Okay. Came from here, didn't I? Yeah, I'm lost already, aren't I? I think I came from here. Oh, no, I didn't. I'm lost already. Ah, uh, there's the key, and I'm guessing that's the key that we will use for, for the ladder. Okay. That's as much as I'm gonna get from here. So, if that's not where I came from, that must be where I came from, so let's go this way. It's locked. Of course. It's locked. Is this the key maybe? No, I can't use it, can I? It's locked. Fair enough, so let's go and see if the ladder were will accept the key. Um, this way, I guess. Oh yeah, that's here. I'm horrible, my my kind of sense of, of direction is worse than bad. That's why I was afraid of the labyrinth. I was hoping that Kate would be a bit better than me. And so she was. There you go, you've got a key now. Well done, Miss Walker. All the way to the roof, you're joking. Can I take the key now? I can't. I certainly hope people won't start playing with this ladder when I'm up there. Hmm. Old and dusty attic. I'll be looking for things to interact with now, so that might be a bit boring. But I have to do this just to make sure. That I know what's happening. A flashlight, maybe? Oh, I can turn the light on. Well done, Kate. You found a hammer. <gasps> Scared me too. No, I didn't dry a mammoth. Let me just have a look at that hammer, I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, so... Oh, I can't take it. I can just switch the light off. None of those hammers. I mean, there is few useful things in this world, but hammers are one of those. Um, okay, never mind, so let's go and speak to Momo, let's see what he's got to say. Hello Momo. Hmm. Can I have a look at that first? Go 
Sorry, Momo, I just want to have a look what you gave me. Okay, that's not how I look at it. Oh, I don't have an option for... Aha, so what I need to do, I need to sketch a mammoth for him, because that's just a pen and paper, or pencil and paper. Okay, so let's... Oh, I can't speak. Oh, I can't give it to him. Sorry, got a bit lost. Well, can't you just draw a mammoth for him? Can't, can you? Let's talk. Well, um, in any other game, so say RPG, I just have a look at the options and choose whatever is most applicable. Well, I think it's just a case of getting all the information I can, so I'll try to work my my way up from the bottom again. Well, I guess that's what they told him when she passed away. And I'm sure they like you too. What's going to happen to you now that Alan is gone? Momo live now. They want Momo to live again. Momo don't want to. Momo take care of Momo. From what I've seen, you look pretty resourceful. Don't tell him that. Don't encourage him, Kate. Okay, so I'm not gonna find out anything about Hans unless I'll give you a mammoth picture, okay? There's something I'm looking for. I don't know quite really what. I know a clue for anything you might tell me where Hans is. You want to help me, don't you? First you draw mammoth for Momo. Okay, so I'm guessing that mission is is out of range as well. I'll just try for the sake of it. Well, Kate. I've got to go now. But see you later, baby. Let's see what we can do for Mamo and Mammoth. All of them were actually drawing mammoths all the time. That seems a bit odd, doesn't it? Or am I the only person that doesn't draw mammoths in free time? Ah, I've got ink, is it? No, it doesn't tell me. And a book. To which in the key, let me guess. Oh no. May the 14th, 1930. Yesterday, so re yesterday something terrible happened. I do not know who to turn to, who to talk to. So I have decided to write it down. You, dear diary, are now my confidant and sole guardian of my secret thoughts. Hans lies in the next room teething between life and death and I am terrified. Oh, the injustice of life. First Mama, then Hans, please dear Lord, don't take my little brother away as well. May the 15th, 1930 again. Hans made me promise to keep this a secret, but it is burden too heavy. I know I can tell you. I, I know I can tell you though, dear diary. We discovered a cave in the mountains, a marvelous cavern with ancient paintings on the walls. 
only prehistoric man could have painted them because there were the depictions of mammoths which are prehistoric creatures as well that much i know i hate mammoths now it's all because of them and because of that stupid prehistoric children's toy why hans or why did you try and take or why did he try and take it and why did i let you climb up there it's my fault you are in coma now hans if you die i do not know how could i ever forgive myself i'm um, just just got a flashback i think that's that was kind of based on a real story because actually those those famous paintings in in france in in caves which name I, ca I can't remember at the moment were found by children who tried to escape school <laughs> um what's the name of the cave lascaux or lasca i don't know how you pronounce it never mind let's go May 16th, 1930, Hans still not regained consciousness. Father cannot sleep, Gertrude cries all day. Outside the heat is suffocating, but inside the house it's icy cold and dismal. I still have hope though. I know my brother, I know his strength, he will pull through. He never gives in. So it sounds like some strange things started happening with that cold and hot. I cannot think of anything else but Hans in all my waking and sleeping dreams. I see his fall over and over, I see his head hitting the rock and his and his also pale face softening. I have taken refuge in the attic. It is the only place where I find any peace wrapped up in all my memories. May 18, 1930 Five days have passed since the accident and Hans has still not opened his eyes. To see him like this is unbearable. Please God protect him. Take my life, not his. 19th of May? I feel so desperate, so alone. I want to snuggle up in father's arms. But I dare not. He is just so impassive. Oh Hans, don't leave me here. May the 20th. It has happened. Hans has come back to life, he opened his eyes and uttered my name. My name, do you realize? This is the happiest day of my life. I want to take to the streets and sing, to proclaim my joy to the world. Thank you, oh thank you God. She was a very religious person, wasn't she? 22nd of May How wonderful, how beautiful life is, Gertrude and I cannot stop breaking into uncontrollable fits of giggles. Hans even wolfed one sorry wolfed down his meal today. I knew he was tough, my little brother. Even father smiled at me today when he said good morning. Twenty fifth of May I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'm totally absorbed in Hans's recovery. I have scarcely five minutes to myself to return to my ref refuge scribble down these words and four days later 29th it is very curious whether Hans is hungry thirsty or if he wants something he cannot stop saying my name he can't bear it when I leave him even for an instant Gertrude thinks that I should move my bed into his room and help him sorry to help him sleep better I hope that father will agree. <clears throat> 2nd of June. Today was the first day that Hans has left the house. We went for a short walk in the garden, but Hans is still very weak. The doctor said we should be patient and shouldn't rush him. It is so hard though, I hope so much that life can return to how it once was. June 20th. Hans has been out his coma for a month now. He still doesn't say much and has difficulty moving. He sits motionless for long periods of time, his eyes wide open as though lost in a thought. I have often had to call his name several times before he reacts. Then he will smile and when he does, the moment is magic for me and I couldn't possibly be happier. Seems like some weird connection was formed between them two. 
June 22nd, I had to talk to him, the burden was too great, I asked Hans about the accident in the cave to find out he could rem if he could remember. He could utter only one word, mammoth, and his eyes glowed so strangely when he said that it that the frightened that he frightened me. Okay, so that's why the obsession with mammoths, I guess. September 15th, so June 22nd, and July, August, and September 15th, so almost three months. I go back to school today, and for the first time in my life, I am dreading it. I am afraid of leaving Hans alone. Despite Gertrude's kindness and attention, I have the impression that Hans is much less nervous when I'm here. There. October. So a month. While I was doing my homework yesterday evening, Hans crept up on me so quietly that he made me jump. He took a pencil and a blank sheet of paper and cured it. Curiously, he started drawing, let me guess, mammoth. It is the first time since his accident he has done anything but daydream. Let me guess he's drawn mammoth. October 28th. Hans scribbled almost obsessively. It is all he will do all day long. I feel it annoyed, annoys fa father. Nobody else understands, but I can see that Hans is trying to draw mammoths. Okay, that's getting just a bit creepy. November the 16th, the same year. Today is my birthday and Gertrude has made me an apple pie, my favorite. But father has not returned home for lunch and Hans doesn't want to leave his room. The best present I could ever have is to see Hans back on the way to recovery. December 25th, so that's Christmas day. Snow is falling, it is so beautiful. Snow is falling, it is so beautiful. Uh, again, Siberia, mammoth, snow, ice age. Or I'm just obsessed now. <laughs> January, the doctor visited to examine Hans. He seems happy that my little brother has fully recovered his faculties. It truly is a miracle. I don't understand why he doesn't talk more, though. Why isn't he livelier like he was before? Well, he did get hit in the head, didn't he? February the 9th. It is Hans's birthday today. He is 11 years old. I have the strangest of impressions that actually he has lost 5 years rather than gained one more. Okay, he got a bit slow. February 24th. The doctor has just left. I saw him whispering with father. Their serious expressions worried me awfully. What could they be hiding from me? I am grown up now. At the age of 15 you can understand everything. <laughs> I am too scared to ask father what is happening. That's February, March. I have been thinking and it seems to me that Hans's attitude isn't normal. The shock of the fall and his coma must have had much more serious effects than we first imagined. Hans, my dear brother, what is happening to you? April the 4th. I have discovered the truth. Hans is stunted physically and mentally. I've evaporated a conversation between the doctor, father and Gertrude. Gertrude buried, buried her tear-filled eyes in her eyes. In her apron and father muttered word retard under his breath. Now could he be s how could he say such a thing? It is Easter and we're on school holidays. This means I this means I can spend sorry, this means I can spend all day with Hans and protect him from father's permanent dark moods. He cannot accept the fact that Hans, his own son, will stay in this state forever. Well, that must have been difficult. It is really difficult to accept, but it is not Hans's fault. Mine maybe, but not Hans's. I do not know how to make father understand. He seems full of hatred for him. It's dreadful. I feel so powerless. She hasn't had easy childhood, has she? May? One year. One year has gone by and it feels like an eternity. The situation shows no signs of improvement, neither in terms of Hans's mental health or father's attitude towards him. Very mature sentences as for a 15-year-old. 
May the 30th, extraordinary, father has decided to take Hans to Paris for new tests. He says that only in French capital will he, will he find truly competent doctors. We must make Hans ready for the great expedition. Week later, no news from father and Hans, but I remain hopeful. I am sure they will take good care of my little brother. And another week and a bit. They have returned. Hans rushed into my arms and started crying. It took me a long time to calm him down, to get him to sleep. Father is still as taciturn. Not sure what that means. As he was before he left, the French doctor has confirmed the, di the diagnosis. Hans will remain physically and mentally impaired. I am stunned. The summer is coming to a close. It has been less stifling than the last sun. Than the last, sorry. The sun has put the color in Hans's cheeks when I took him. When I look at him, I have difficulty imagining that he will not change. And November, so quite a while between those two. Father still says nothing and increasingly shuts himself away in his office at the factory. So office in the factory is something we should have a look at. Christmas, Gertrude tells me that love and faith triumph over the science. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I lack neither, God be praised. Ah, uh, so that's that's another thing about her over religiousness if you ask if you ask me. Father took Hans to the factory this morning. Hans was so afraid that I accompanied him. Fortunately father said nothing. I failed to understand why he insisted on bringing him there. In January father left for the factory with Hans once again this morning. I think he wants to persuade Hans that he could be useful for something. It is a way of resisting fate. For a month now, every morning Hans has gone to work with father at the factory. I'm not exactly sure what he does there, but he seems to enjoy it. I feel my brother's behavior has changed considerably. He is much less capricious. April? I could cry. Hans has made me a present. A small robot mammoth, of course, with a trunk that rises and falls. When father saw it, he nodded his head in satisfaction. May. Both Gertrude and father now have their own robot mammoths. They are even more in intrigued. Intricate. And finely tuned. And finely tuned. Little brother is not such a retard after all. October the 15th. Hans's mounts now walk, race, and their trunks. Raise their trunks and wag their tails. It's incredible. December 22nd, I met the head of the factory workshop, Mr. Griffiths, this morning. He says that for a young lad of 12, Hans is very gifted. It is a shame he only makes elephants. <laughs> They're not elephants. Oh, I can, I can take the flower, maybe? Okay, just try it. February the 11th, 33. Father and Hans were locked in a long discussion yesterday, or should I say Hans was locked in one of father's long monologues. As it is in inconceivable that Hans should go to school like other children, father wants to take him on a wo as a worker at the factory. However, Hans will have, a s will have stopped me. However, Hans will have... I think it should be two here. Stop making his own little devices. Hans silence, his half-cupping mouth and staring eyes finally sent father off in a rage. Never, never got to terms with, with his with his son being what he became. I tried to broach the subject. With to broach the subject with Hans, I suggested he should obey father learning a craft at the factory is his one chance to do something constructive with his life. He is so gifted and takes so much pleasure in making automatons. He did look like he wasn't listening to me, but I know he'll think about it. He'll think about what I said. 
and then February again, more than a week later. It's not that Hans cannot speak, it's rather that he doesn't want to speak. He uses the least possi possible words for communication, except with me, but he is still very economical with words. Incredible, Hans was not just satisfied with learning how the assembly line works. Instead, he has completely redesigned it. Father and Mos Monsieur Grips are taking a serious look at his plans. Well done, Hans. Father has wanted to talk to me about my future since I passed my exams. He wants to send me to university because he says my intelligence is astounding. My heart was beating so loud, it is true I do love studying, but I couldn't bear to be away from Hans. That's a long diary. And September the 2nd, 1933. What a ghastly summer. I have been permanently torn between my desire to go to university and my refusal to leave my brother. I talked about it with Hans, but he said nothing. That same evening I found my own little mammoth broken. Ooh. October the 9th, Hans had another fit of hysterics at dinner again. Father announced that Hans' new assembly line would soon be finished. However, they have removed the automaton parts that shout orders as they were deemed superfluous. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Hans was livid. He hurled his soup dish to the ground and stormed off to his bedroom. What will happen between the both of them when I'm not here? Despite my scruples, I am finally leaving. Hans has not talked to me for a week. Father would not understand if I told him why I wanted to stay. My heart is so heavy. That's October. Christmas. It is so strange to be home. I had never felt home for such a long time before. I have never left home for such a long time before. Once we were alone, Hans did not stop talking. Words just leaped from his mouth. How we laughed at his excitement. He presented me with a delightful little ballerina. Not mammoth anymore, good thing. To replace the mammoth, he told me. I was so touched that I started crying. Distance has done nothing to harm the strong bond between us. Okay, that's even weirder. September. Ooh, so nine months between this and this. It is so strange to pick up this diary once more. At first my impulse was to tear it up, but I resisted and instead scrabbled to my second desire. Scumbled to my second desire, which was to write for a while. I am alone in my attic once more. I have been home for two months now and after a summer spent living with the intense joy of being returned to my with my brother, Hans has returned to the factory. Father has aged and so and so Gertrude's arthritis causes her terrible pain. Well, that's that's just a... Oh, sorry, that's 33. And that's 37. That's four years and nine months. All in all, these last four years have been kind to father and Hans. Their relationship is less tense. They still do not exchange much conversation, but they now have a thing in common the factory. I'm even beginning to feel a bit jealous. Silly, really. September the 17th. Hans hasn't changed to help Gertrude. Hans hasn't changed. To help Gertrude, he has designed a totally automatic kitchen and, and Gertrude can't stop moaning at the wooden puppets. Oh, how I adore them. So they were wooden back then. I went to go and see father and Hans at work. I hadn't been to the factory for ages. It is strange how much it has changed. I was very curious to see them set about their tasks. I like father's new office very much. Hans has a small workshop on the first floor. Comment with odds and ends. Unfinished robots and designs, exactly as I imagined in, in fact. Imagined it in fact. 
The factory is working very well. Orders for toys keep coming in spurred on by in spurred on by the run up to Christmas. When I was at university and I said my name was Vorlberg, people would ask me if I had any relation to the Valadilane factory. Now I know the effect that Hans's genius has had on the factory's renown. So he's the one responsible for the factory being as famous as it is. To make myself useful, I started helping father set his papers in order. The most extraordinary thing of all is that for the first time ever, I have impression that the three of us form a real family. Another leaves. In December, Hans never ceases to surprise me. Between home and factory, his behavior is so different. In his workshop, he is serious, concentrated, a proper young man who keeps eye on everything going on, constantly on the move and in control. Sorry, I have to drink something because my throat is getting dry. Uh, in control. One has the impression that each single toy has his very own infant. At home, he turns back into a child once more and is either moody or happy-go-lucky buffoon. <laughs> Another Christmas? The most wonderful Christmas of my whole life. Hans and, Hans and I could not stop giggling like children beneath father's disappointing glare. I know that he was only prevent pretending really. Our hearts are so full of hope. I guess that when I'm gonna get to editing the video I'll just post some links so you can skip the whole diary, because listening to me reading reading it, I don't think it's much of a of a fun. January the fifth, thirty eight, Hans came to see me in my bedroom yesterday evening. I felt terribly awkward, terribly ill at ease. I might have guessed Hans wants to leave leave Valadilla in the house and the factory. He wants to go travelling. He doesn't know where to or for how long. That's just like him. I was so shocked that I told him his plans were foolish. He left my room without a word. His head bowed. That's how he went to Siberia, right? I wonder if it, the war is gonna be mentioned because we're getting closer to 39 and 40. January the 7th. I thought that he wanted to leave because of father, not at all, it's because of the mammoths again. He wants to go tracking mammoths. I thought he had gotten over his obsession, I know my brother only too well. I wouldn't dream of telling him his quest is useless. It isn't worth it, he will not listen to the reason. I was so selfish the other evening. I returned to talk to Hans and asked him gently if he was sure of his decision. I already know that he, what the reply is going to be. Nothing will make him change his mind. January 19. Despite my profound sadness despair, and despair, I must help Hans fulfill the destiny he has chosen and announce the news to the father. I fear the worst. The worst was worse than my fears. Okay. Father's anger was terrifying. He shut Hans away in his workshop at the factory and has forbidden all visits except from Gertrude, who feeds him. Okay, that's sick. Father has decided that Hans should remain locked up for as long as it takes him to, ab to abandon his infantile decision. Gertrude tells me that Hans is very despondent, despondent, yet highly res resolute. The worry is driving me mad. Hello? As soon as Gertrude reta returns from the factory, I hasten to get news of my little brother. He doesn't say anything, he just fiddles with bits and pieces. She replies every day with a sigh. I have tried desperately to reason with father, but I know I am just wasting my breath. Hans is 18 years old today and he is all on his own for his birthday. I guess I should check out that that room where, where he was locked. 
There might be some clues in there as well. February 20th. In secret, Gertrude delivered to me a small robot from Hans. It's a robot of, as, of us as children. It works with a small cylinder punched with tiny holes. I quivered with emotion as I turned the key. The message it gave was simple. He was telling me he loved me very, very much. That's nice of him. Gertrude gave me, gave me different tiny cylinder for today's toy. Hans is truly incredible. He has found a means to com of communicating between us and us alone in total secret. Okay, so the toy she has been given, the one of them as children, works like a reader for those cylinders, I guess. We'll see. My days are spent eagerly away are spent eagerly awaiting Hans's message. He has now resolved to run away. He has now resolved to run away. Okay. He is preparing his escape. I like like if it was a game. Gertrude has returned and she is beside herself. Hans has disappeared. Father has not even dig begging to return to the workshop where he locked up his son nor find out how he managed to escape. He just gave me a bleak look as if he knew we were up to something behind his back. It is beginning to dawn on me that Hans has gone. I miss him so much. Lord, please protect my little brother and watch over him for me. With Hans gone, father now locks himself away. Night and day at the factory, the house is so gloomy now. This morning I caught father in the drawing room, installing a coffin on a trestle. The sight of it made my blood freeze. What on earth is he up to? My questions met only with stony silence and permanent black countenance. Black countenance. Black countenance. Okay. Behind closed curtains the drawing the drawing room with the coffin surrounded by huge candles has become a veritable funeral chamber this is ghastly i have just understood what father is up to this morning the priest came to pray before the coffin and finally caught on father is in mourning for the death of hans Father made the priest believe that his son was dead. How could he do such a thing? How could he indeed? March the 16th. In the madness occasioned by his grief, my father grows even more cold and calculating. He contacted his old friend, Dr. Schmoll, who duly drew up a bona fide death certificate without even seeing the body. I dare not imagine what yearn he spun. 38 again. Hans's funeral will be officially held next Sunday. Father strictly forbade me to attend. This sordid masquerade makes me feel ill, but I cannot denounce the subterfuge of or else I will display my father's mental instability to the world. The shame would kill him, that much is certain. Sorry for not pronouncing some words correctly, uh, I'm just encountering them for the first time. I have to get away, far, far away. No, I will not leave. I have thought long and hard. My life is here, next to my father. He needs me too much now, the factory needs me, because the father is incapable of running it now. Besides, I can only find peace of mind among Hans's robots. And how shall I know when he, when he has sent me new ones if I am not at home to receive them? No, I shall not leave. My destiny is to remain here and keep watch. Not a very bright destiny. Okay, so that's Anna Vogelberg's diary. I think I still have it somewhere. Yes, I do. I can't take the picture, can I? 
okay so that's that's that i think i'll finish this episode here i know it wasn't very interesting mostly just me reading and, and mispronouncing things but kate seems quite happy about what what she found she's got some ideas about where to look further so stay tuned for the next episode if i haven't scared you away thank you for watching and take care